Hey, welcome back guys. This is part one of the calculator series. In this video, we're going to get started. The first thing we want to do is import tkinter. This is going to allow us to create our GUI. Now let's actually create the GUI. So we just created a window. Let's run it so we can see it. And this is the window that we just created. It doesn't have anything in it. So we're going to use some of tkinter's methods to add things like buttons. We can add a title. We can change the icon. The first thing we want to do is call on this method named main loop. And you're going to call on this method each time that you create a GUI window. Main loop is an event handler. It's looking out for events like the click of a button, for example. So if you click a button, main loop is going to process that. So it's going to do whatever you instructed that button to do. So you're going to need that for each one of your GUIs. Now we're going to use some more methods. Let's use the title method to change the title. Let's rename it to calculator. And let's also give this window a width and height. For this, we're going to use a method named geometry. And you can specify what width and height you want this window to have. I'm going to go with 355 for width and 475 for height. And let's see what this looks like. There's the title change. And here's our new width and our new height. Now let's give it some color. We're going to use configure for this. And here you're going to include BG and go ahead and give it whatever color you want. You could either type in the name of the color or you could use a hexadecimal number. Let's try with the name first. So here's the blue. Now let's use a hexadecimal number here. For this, I want you to go to this website, w3schools.com. Go ahead and select the color that you like and select the shade of that color. Copy that hexadecimal number and then paste it in here. And let's try it again. And now it's that shade of that orange brownish color that I selected. Now we're going to change the icon of our window. For this, we're going to use a method named icon bitmap. You are going to have to go download an image. So open up your browser and I want you to search for flaticon.com. And I want you to search for a calculator icon. Go ahead and select an image that you like. Go ahead and grab this in 64 pixels. Click free download. Now this file is of type PNG, but our icon bitmap method takes files that are of type ICO. So we're gonna have to convert this image into a type ICO file. So I want you to go to this website, icoconvert.com and go ahead and upload that image here. Click upload. There's the image and I want you to select 64 by 64, convert ICO, download the icon. And I want you to save this icon in the folder that you have your Python file saved in. All right, I had already downloaded mine and converted it. So that's why I didn't do that step with you. And just type in the name of the file and it's of type ICO. So let's run this. And your icon should pop up just like that. Uh, one more method that I want to call on before we start creating the actual buttons and stuff for the calculator is this method named resizable. So you see how you can resize this window. I don't want you to be able to do that because when we create the calculator, it's going to be weird if the user can make the calculator bigger when the calculator buttons are going to be located right here. This method is called resizable. It takes two parameters, width and height. Let's set both of those to false. And now you won't be able to resize that window. You could actually just use false and false and it'll work just fine. I actually prefer it this way. 
and let's look at that. All right, you see how you can't resize it anymore? Now we're going to create our entry box and our buttons. But first, we're going to create a frame. And the frame just makes it easier for us to place our buttons and our entry box exactly where we want them in our window. So let's call it the button frame. And we're going to use the frame class for this. Frame is a class that is part of Tkinter as well. We want this frame to be located in our window. So that's going to be the first parameter. And let's also give it some color. We're going to use the same color that we used here. So just control C and control V to paste it. Now this isn't enough for you to actually see anything when we run this project. Here we just created the frame and we gave it some instructions like what color we wanted it to have. To actually see it on our window, we have to pack it. So just type in the name of your frame and use dot pack. Now it's going to be on our window. But even if we run it right now, you won't be able to see it because the frame doesn't really have anything. It's just meant to hold things. So it's going to hold our entry box and our buttons. So we're going to add our entry box to it. So let's create that entry box here. Let's call it expression field. And we're going to use the entry class for this. So the first parameter is always where you want this to be located at. We want this to be in the button frame that we just created. And let's also create a text variable. The purpose of the text variable is to grab whatever the user enters into this entry box. We're going to call this text variable equation. And we want to make it of type string. So we have to tell it that up here. To make it of type string, you're going to type in equal string var. And we also want the text to appear on the right, not on the left. Let me show you what I mean. You see how the text is on the right and not on the left? By default, tkinter places it on the left. If you want it on the right, you have to use justify equals right. And we can also tell it what font we want to display on that entry box. I want it to be Arial. I want it in size 20. And I want it to be bold. If we run it like this, it's not going to display the entry box because we haven't packed it yet. So let's pack it. All right, let's run it. And there's a zero. Now let's create the buttons. I'm going to delete this. The only reason that I packed it is because I wanted you to see it. But the way that I like to do it is I actually like to create everything that I want to add to that window. And then I like to pack everything at the same time. So we're going to delete this here. We're going to create all our buttons. And once we create all the buttons, then we're going to pack this and we're going to pack all of the buttons as well at the same time. I think it just makes the code look cleaner and easier to read. So let's create the first button. Let's call it button one. And we're going to use the button class for this. Let's create a space here. We want this button to be located in the button frame. We want this button to display a one. And we want it to display it in Times New Roman font. size 12. Let's give this button a border. There's different border styles. Let me show you a picture. These are all the different styles that Tkinter has to offer. I'm going to go with this ridge style. This is with a size 8. But I'm going to go with a size 1 because I don't want it to be too thick. So let's type in here ridge. And border width is how thick you want it to be. I'm going to go with 1. We're also going to give this button a color. We're going to use BG for that, short for background. You could also type in background. Either one works. Let's go back to w3schools.com and select the color. I'm going to go with 95% of this same orange. Let's look at our blueprint real quick. We can also set the width and the height of the button. I'm going to go with a width of 8 and a height of three. And I'm actually going to make my font a little bit smaller. B 
because I should be able to fit everything that I want to add to that button in two lines but I made the font too big so apologize if you can't see it as good but you wouldn't be able to see it. I don't want to create three lines for one button so I'm actually gonna fix it a little bit so I'm gonna put that up there border width you can also use BD either one will work just fine I'm gonna go with BD that way I have more room to work with we're gonna add one more parameter So we want to call in a function whenever the user clicks on this button. This function is going to be named press and we want to send over a one. To be able to call in a function, we have to use command. And if you want to send something over, you have to use Lambda as well. Let's create it up here. Well, actually, we're not going to create it yet, but we'll just have it ready there for when we create it. Let's continue with our buttons. Okay, so this is the last parameter that we were adding. So we're done with our first button, but we need 16 more buttons. Let me show you. So we just created this button. Now we need the rest of these buttons. The rest of the buttons have very similar code to them. The only difference is that the text that it's gonna display and the number that it's gonna send over to the press function. So we're just gonna copy and paste this one and we're gonna change whatever we need to change from each one. So just control C and control V to paste. And you're gonna do this 16 times. All right. So let's start here. This is gonna be button two. We're gonna change the text and what it sends over to the press function. Button three. And then after button three, we have the addition. So this is gonna be the addition button we're gonna change this to the addition symbol and we're gonna send over an addition symbol through this press function as well. Okay, this goes back to button number four. This is five. Six. This is the subtract button. This is button seven. Eight. Nine. This is the multiplication. I'm just gonna call it multiply. Let's look at the calculator. All right, we need the zero, decimal, clear, and divide, and equals. So this is button zero. This is the decimal button. This is the clear button. For this one, we're gonna call in a different function. So we're gonna erase this. This function is gonna be called clear. Let's go create it up here underneath the press function. And let's just use pass for now. 
Okay, this is the division button. And then we actually need one more, so I'm just gonna copy this. This is gonna be the equal button. And we're going to call in a different function for this one as well. We're going to call it equal press. Let's create it up here. Let's run this. And it's not displaying anything because we didn't pack it or add it to the grid, which is another way that we can add things to our window. In the next video, we'll do that. And we'll also complete these functions here. And that'll wrap it up for this series. So I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching.